trucks gather at the Karam Salem border post. It's the only official crossing for goods and fuel into Gaza from Israel, but the Israeli government has now all but closed it. It says it will let food and medicine in on a case-by-case -case basis, but not fuel, essential for powering Gaza's basic services. Many of the almost two million people here only get electricity for four to six hours a day. I hope this fuel blockade doesn't last because it will cause some problems and life will stop. Sewage and rubbish will pile up and other projects will come to an end. People will not be able to go to work, the Ministry of Health will not be able to treat shunts. An official in Gaza's fuel sector tells us that Gaza needs around 700,000 litres of gasoline and diesel every day just to meet its basic needs. Now, with these new restrictions by Israel, that fuel simply isn't coming in anymore. Of course, Gazans have already suffered 12 years of Israel's land, air and sea blockade, and these latest restrictions come after the worst escalation of violence between Hamas and Israel, 2014 war. Israel says it launched dozens of airstrikes at Hamas targets in the Gaza Strip in response to Palestinian protesters launching kites or balloons carrying Molotov cocktails across its Gaza fence. Hamas responded by launching around 200 rockets, mortars and incident devices. An Egyptian brokered ceasefire was announced on Saturday night. Israel says fires caused by the kites have destroyed more than 10,000 hectares of some private land in recent weeks. It has also put further restrictions on Gaza's fishing industry, reducing the area fishermen can work in from six to within three nautical miles. It's estimated at least 50,000 families are in some way involved in fishing in Gaza. Israel has been decreasing our fishing area for years. They have killed and injured fishermen and confiscated 45 boats. 